The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike, first again with Tobacco Men. First again with Tobacco Men. More independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. Yes, more than the next two leading brands combined. There you have the findings of a recent impartial survey which reveals the personal smoking preference of the men who really know tobacco. Auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. So for your own real, deep-down smoking enjoyment, light up a Lucky, light up a really fine cigarette, and puff by puff, you'll see... L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. So smoke the smoke, tobacco expert smoke. Lucky Strike. First again with Tobacco Man, Lucky Strike. From New York City, the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our last broadcast of this season. We've had 39 strenuous weeks of radio, and on the shoulders of the star of our show fell the task of carrying this burden. So, without further ado, we bring you a very tiresome comedian... That's tired. Jack Benny! <laughs> Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And Don, you're right. This has been a very grueling season. Work, work, nothing but work. I tell you, Don, I'm so tired right now, I can hardly keep my big blue eyes open. <laughs> I'm really all in. Well, Jack, I know it's been a tough season, but I can't understand why you should be that tired. After all, you're only 39. Well, look, Don, it's hard for a man of your age to realize how tired you can get. How old are you? 38. Well... <laughs> Just wait 15 years till you're 39. You'll be tired, too. Of course, the burden you're carrying is not on your shoulders. Right? <laughs> I mean, how you got a pair of pants to fit your burden is beyond me. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jack. I wish you'd stop joking about my being fat. It's embarrassing. People on the street point at me. Why, taxi drivers won't even stop for me. Yeah, I can't understand that, Don. New York taxi drivers are known for their courtesy and politeness. I well, take the fellow who drove me from the station to my hotel. When I got out, he was so shy, he wouldn't even ask me for the fare. He just grabbed me by the ankles, turned me upside down, and shook me. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Oh, my goodness, Jack. What did you say? Nothing. I had my money in my mouth. <laughs> Anyway, I will say this cab driver is very efficient. He picked me up at the station, drove straight to the Sherry Netherlands Hotel. Oh, do you live there? No, he does. <laughs> you know, these cab drivers... Well, look who's here. Hello, Mary. Hi, Jack. Hello, everybody. Well, Mary, here we are finishing another season. Another 39 weeks that you've worked for me. How do you feel? Hungry. <laughs> what do you mean, hungry? On what you pay me, I can't even open a window at the automat. All right, all right, you and your jokes, automat. I saw you at the store club last night. I was selling cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> selling cigarettes? How'd you do? <laughs> Not bad. I was first again with tobacco men. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. You know, we can use that routine at the Palladium Theater in London. Just think, Mary, pretty soon we'll be on the high seas... On our way to England. I know, and Jack, before we go, you ought to have all your clothes clean. That chip we're uh, going on is kind of big. You won't be able to lean over the side and do your laundry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't stop too long there. <laughs> I'll find a way. Well, Mary, Mary, I tried to reach you yesterday. I tried to reach you yesterday. Where were you? I was visiting my sister, Babe, in the Polyclinic Hospital. Gee, I didn't know Babe was sick. She's not. She's the janitor there. <laughs> Honey, I knew she could do it. I can't understand how Murph lets her... Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Here, boy, I'll take it. Here's a tip for you. Oh, boy, a nickel. Now I can live at the Sherry Netherlands. <laughs> hmm. Jack.
Jack. <laughs> Who's the telegram from? Wait till I open it, Mary. Mm. Mm. Here, Mary, you open it. I haven't had my Wheaties today. <laughs> okay. What does it say? Uh, dear Jack, understand you're going to England next Wednesday. Wish I had gone last Thursday. Signed, Joe Walcott. <laughs> well, isn't... isn't that nice? He wired me as soon as he came to. Isn't that, nice? that was really all a... right, Jackson. They've waited long enough, so stand aside, Dad. Let them see me. Let them see you. It's on pretty. Well, Phil, here we are finishing another season. Another 39 weeks that you've worked for me. How do you feel? Thirsty. <laughs> oh, fine. Mary's hungry and you're thirsty. Hey, Jackson, were you at the Lewis Walcott fight at the Yankee Stadium Friday night? Sure, Phil. I was sitting right up front. Did you hear the big reception I got when I came in? Everybody jumped to their feet and cheered and yelled. Really, Phil? When'd you come in? At two minutes and 56 seconds of the 11th round. <laughs> oh, Heaven's sake, Phil. They were cheering the fight. Jersey Joe Walcott was staggering all over the place. So was I. <laughs> what? I hope Walcott fell better the next morning than I did. <laughs> I'm sure he did. Say, Phil, I haven't seen you since you came in from Cleveland. Where have you been? Oh, Dunsey, I had to stop off in Philadelphia to cast my vote at the Republican convention. You, uh, Phil, you cast your vote? Uh? Certainly. I was chairman of the delegation from do wah did it. <laughs> You can't give them those words. <laughs> well, why do you keep putting them in there? <laughs> Say, Jack. What? Didn't you think the convention was exciting? The convention, it sure was. And those Republicans must be pretty sure of getting into the White House. They nominated Dewey, Warren, and four piano movers. <laughs> and you know, kids... It's quite an honor to us Californians to have our governor nominated for vice president. I'm pretty thrilled because just two years ago, Earl Warren was a guest on my program. Yeah, and Jackson, that Governor Warren's really a good-looking guy, ain't he? He sure is, Phil. He's very popular, too. Yeah, what a guy. Handsome, beautiful smile, full of charm and personality. Why, if he could lead a band, he'd be another Phil Harris. <laughs> How do you like that? Say, hey, Phil. What is it, Livy? <laughs> If Walcott's head was as big as yours, Lewis would have hit it in the first round. Mary, I could kiss you for that. Thanks, Jack, but I'm still hungry. Well, I'll get you a sandwich when we get to London. No use having one here. We may have a rough voyage. You know. <laughs> oh, say, Don. Uh, yes, Jack? I've had a request to repeat the saber dance on my violin. Is the quartet here? Yes, there they are, the sportsmen. Oh, yes, I didn't see them. Hello, fellas. Hello, fellas. Boys, I said hello. Don, Don, squeeze them, will you? Okay. Mm. Good. <laughs> now, wait till I get my violin. Hand it to me, will you, Mary? All right, but I'll hate myself in the morning. Never mind, give it to me. All right, boys, let's go. The saber dance. <laughs> Better try a lucky day or made down in Kentucky. Better buy luckies, better try luckies, better buy luckies, better try luckies. That's a cigarette that you will like. <laughs>
what you're missing if you stop and smoke in this and hurry now and buy a carton. That should be enough to start a lucky that will be your favorite friend. <laughs> they are the best friend in the land. Wonderful. I was never better. I mean, you were good, too, in there, you know? I wish you were going to England with me. Hey, Jackson, while we're over in London, I'm going to buy one of them English tweets. You mean a suit? Yeah, and I ain't going to take just any old English suit in London. I'm going to pick a dilly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, I'll bet Milton Berle's got that written down already. <laughs> <laughs> written down? He's got it on television right now. <laughs> and not only that, as soon as we oh, get... hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. Well, Dennis, here we are finishing another season. Another 39 weeks you've been working for me. How do you feel? At the Sherry Netherlands. <laughs> what? Gee, I read the wrong line. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, I haven't seen you since we got to town. You been having a good time? Boy, I'll say. Gee, I really like New York. The people here are so friendly and so trusting. Trusting? What do you mean, kid? Well, last night a fella stopped me on the street and he wanted to borrow five dollars. And when I gave it to him, he didn't even ask me my name. For heaven's sake, Dennis, if he didn't get your name, how will he know who to return it to? Well, he stuck with the money. Let him worry about it. <laughs> Dennis, kid, come here a minute. Huh? I want to feel your head, see if it's ripe enough to pick yet. <laughs> I want to thank you for taking me to the fight Friday night. You were the only one that asked me. Dennis, you take Mary to the fight? Yeah. Gee, what excitement at the end of the 11th round when the police all gathered around, picked him off the floor, and carried him back to his seat. Joe Wolcott? No, Phil Harris. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, Phil. Gee, I was so proud. He's my friend. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, everybody here in the studio is anxious to hear your song. How about it? Okay. Now, hold it, kid. Come in. Well, 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 Mr. Kitzel. Hello, Mr. Benny Boy. <laughs> oh, my, it's a pleasure to see you. Well, Mr. Kitzel, how do you happen to be in New York? I came here last week to go to a wedding. A cousin of mine got married. Oh, well, congratulations. Mr. Sure. Kitzel. Yes. Did you have a good time at the wedding? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it was a big party, eh? The wine flowed like celery tonic. <laughs> <laughs> celery tonic? That's a vegetarian champagne. <laughs> oh. And then right after the ceremony was over, I was the first in line to kiss the groom. <laughs> The groom, you're supposed to kiss the bride. With her face, we had trouble getting the groom to do it. <laughs> oh, well, did you meet a lot of your old friends there? Everybody who I knew for years, even Pansy Nussbaum. Pansy Nussbaum, huh? Uh, she's working for, uh, you should excuse the expression, I have Fred an Allen. idea. Yeah, I have an idea. <laughs> well, Mr. Kitzel, I'm awfully glad you dropped in. Thank you, Mr. Benny. And here I brought you a farewell present for your boat trip. I had that made especially for you. Well, let's see it. Now, isn't that cute? A long bagel that spells out Bon Voyage. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Kitzel. You just in good health. Thank Goodbye. you, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Isn't it funny how I run into Mr. Kitzel literally every place I go? Now, come on, Dennis. It's time for your song. What's it going to be? It's a lullaby that I recorded for RCA Victor called Sleep My Child. Swell. Go right ahead. 
Wonderful number, Dennis, you, and you sang it beautifully. And Phil, it's the first time I've heard the orchestra sound so nice. And I'll take it. It's probably Rochester. Hello? Hello, this is the operator. I have a long-distance call for Jack Benny in New York City. Long distance? Where's it from? Harlem. <laughs> That's what I thought. Put him on. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Well, it's about time you called, Rochester. I haven't heard from you since we arrived in New York. I'm sorry, boss, but Monday night when I got to Harlem, there was a big party celebrating Joe Lewis's victory. Monday night? Wait a minute, Rochester. It wasn't until Friday night that Lewis beat Walcott. We're still celebrating his victory over smelling. <laughs> but that was 10 years ago. Why are they holding the party now? It was postponed on account of rain. <laughs> Well, Rochester, I hope it's not a wild party. Uh, what are you having to drink? I don't know, but I'm calling from the chandelier. 
That's what I thought. Now, Rochester, I hope you packed everything in my trunk that I need. You know, while I'm in London, I'm going to participate in the Olympic Games. You are? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, <laughs> so fine. So surprised. Hope you win, boss. I hope you win. You do? Yeah, America hasn't had a tiddlywink champion in years. <laughs> Rochester, I'm not going to London just to tiddly. Look at for your information, I'm going to throw the discus. You're going to what the who? I'm going to throw the discus. Throwing the discus is an ancient Roman sport that was popular during the days of Nero. I thought you were playing the fiddle then. <laughs> now cut that out. And Rochester, when I leave, I hope you'll be down to the dock to see me off. Oh, I will, boss. I will. Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. I'm gonna miss Rochester, too. But just think, kids, in a little while, we'll be out on the Atlantic Ocean. Headed. Come in. Uh, pardon me. I was looking for the washroom, but this will do. <laughs> My friend! <laughs> Let out! Uh, Jack, I really uh, dropped in tonight. Wait a minute, Fred. Wait a minute. Let me look at you. Yeah. Gee, you're looking swell. Yeah. I've never seen you have such rosy-colored bags under your eyes. <laughs> well, look, Jack, I dropped in... And a pained expression on your face. You look like a hen trying to lay a basketball. <laughs> I'm getting mine in first. <laughs> well, all right, Jack. Uh, and uh, those wrinkles. Yeah. Honestly, Fred, your face looks like a convertible with the top halfway down. You know what I mean? <laughs> now sit down, little man. <laughs> You must be tired after that Bob Hopian outburst. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please tune in your radios an hour from now when this nature boy of the gay 90s is a guest on my program without his writers. <laughs> now, Fred, what... Benny, you... with, without his writers, you can't tell Benny from Mr. Hush. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Fred. What do and you he should talk about the way I look. Benny's hairline has receded so far, he combs his eyebrows to keep up his morale. <laughs> Fred, no. I have seen more fuzz on a harvest moon. <laughs> I'd hate to be drowning and have someone throw me a line like that. I would... <laughs> Persimmon face. Look yeah. at it. What did you come barging in here for anyway? Well, frankly, I didn't uh, drop in here to see you, Jack. It's Mary I'd like to talk to. Hello, Mary. Hello, Fred. What is it you wanted? Well, Mary, you can do me a great favor. I came... Hiya, Frederick. Long time no see. Well, if it isn't Phil Harris, Hollywood's answer to, look, Ma, I'm drinking. <laughs> There's Dennis Day. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Allen. Look, Fred, we're doing a program. Now, what do you want to see Mary about? Uh, yes, Fred, what is it? Well, Mary, every now and then, Portland likes to take a couple of weeks off my program, and I thought, you know, I thought a hungry girl like you uh, might, uh, <laughs> might like to take her place. Well, thanks, Fred, but I don't think I could take Portland's place. Oh, yes, you could. Why don't you try, uh, just try reading a line or two? Wait a minute. <laughs> Fred, I don't want my program sounding like yours. I had three answers to that, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Two of them the censor took out, and the third one I wouldn't dare tell without an air wick on the premises. <laughs> oh, Jack, I'll just imitate Portland for a second. It won't sound like Fred's program. Well, go ahead, Mary. Well, all right. Oh, Mr. Allen! Mr. Allen! What is it, Portland? I'm from the South, the deep South, that is. <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. <coughs> And I'm not wrong for this one. Dennis. Howdy, Bob. <laughs> now, stop it. Look, Fred, will you please let me run my own show? This is worse than last week when Bob Hope dropped oh, in on no, us unexpectedly. Oh, no, no, not worse than last week. No, no. <laughs> and we used up so much time, my program was cut off the air 10 seconds too soon. Well, I thought it was cut off 30 minutes too late. <laughs> now, listen, now. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. Don't get excited. And, Fred, as much as I'd like to substitute for Portland, I couldn't. 
You see, Jack has me signed to exclusive contracts. Well, Mary, that's nothing to worry about. Contracts can be broken. Let me see yours. Well, Fred, I, I'd rather not. I'm too modest. What has modesty got to do with your contract? It's tattooed on my back. <laughs> You're down right. Anyway, Mary, you're under exclusive contract to me. If you go on Fred's program, I'm not going to take you to Europe. Oh, all right, Jack, I won't. You know, Fred, uh, we're going to appear at the Palladium in London. Yeah? And then we're going to tour the continent. We're even going to Germany. Good. That'll teach him to start wars over there. <laughs> that I'm going to ignore entirely, as I hoped the audience would. Oh, Jack, <laughs> arguing. Why don't you two kiss and make up? Well, all right, Mary. I'm willing. Of course you're willing. You have to kiss me. Look what I'm stuck with. <laughs> anyway, I'm leaving for England soon, so I won't have to see you for a while. Well, I can't imagine you spending the money to go to Europe. What are you talking about? I always spend money. Well, I even went to see the Lewis Walcott fight. I know. I saw you coming out of that newsreel theater. <laughs> what? You spend money. Why, the last time you opened your wallet, Washington said to Lincoln... Pull down the shade, Abe. The light's killing me. Listen, now, another crack like that, and I'll punch you so hard, it'll straighten out your wrinkles and make your face four feet square. <laughs> I've seen like better that. material than that in a four-dollar suit. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you refugee from Yours the old is folks. worse than mine. Now, just read it. Go ahead. Wait till you, wait till you hear this one. You think mine is a stinker? Listen to this one. Go ahead. Why, you refugee from the old folks' home... You want the rest of it? Yeah. <laughs> if you had enough strength to double up your fish, you'd be too tired to swing it. There, that gives you an idea. Yeah. That's what you think. You better shut up or I'll pull your lip down and hook it to your belt buckle. Oh, brother. Now, I'm warning you, Alan. You better get out while I, I still got while control no of my temper. <laughs> now, careful now, Benny. You're liable to blow your top and you paid eight bucks for it. <laughs> Finally! <laughs> it's about time. Go back, Throw him out. Mary. Don't bother, Mary. I'm leaving anyway. Go on, beat it. I'm telling you right now, I'm not appearing on your program tonight. Then you won't get paid. What time's rehearsal? Eight o'clock. I'll be there. <laughs> Goodbye, Fred. Goodbye, Jack. Go you know, Mary, he's a sweet guy. Play, <laughs> Jack will be back in just a minute, but first... Ed Pepper, say I'm not a bit of a man, I'm a little bit of a man, I'm a little bit of a man, Lucky Strike, first again with Tobacco Man. First again with Tobacco Man. As a recent impartial survey reveals, more independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. Yes, more than the next two leading brands combined. Lucky Strike. First again with Tobacco Man. That's what the survey shows. Now listen to a statement recently made by Mr. James Maynard Talley, tobacco warehouseman from Durham, North Carolina. From what he knows, from what he sees, this is what he said. Season after season, I've seen good, ripe, mild tobacco bought by the makers of Lucky Strike. I've smoked Lucky's 18 years. They give me a mild, mellow smoke. So take a tip from the experts, and for your own real, deep-down smoking enjoyment, light up a Lucky. Light up a really fine cigarette, and puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So smoke the smoke, tobacco experts smoke. Lucky Strike. First again with Tobacco Man. Lucky Strike. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my cast, my writers, everybody associated with my program, I want to thank all of you who have been listening to us for nigh on to 16 years. We'll see you again in the fall. I want to thank Alan for lousing up my program, <laughs> and I hope you'll tune into our summer replacement, a new and exciting quiz program called Let's Talk Hollywood. The show will feature George Murphy and Edith Gwynn, and the guest... This is NBC, NBC, the National Eddie Broadcasting Brown. Company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. Dot com.